All right, so today we're going to start unit three. It's on matter and energy. Um, we're headed towards doing atoms and whatnot next after this. So this should be a brief unit. Most of it's review, some of it is new. Um, starting with matter today, and most of this you learned in middle school, or you should have. Um, and so hopefully it's jingles a couple of the rocks in your brains a little loose so you remember what's going on. And so the study of chemistry is just the study of matter and the changes that that matter is undergoing. We have already talked about that a little bit. Um, and so the physical properties of matter, there's two different types. We can have intensive and extensive properties. Intensive is the amount of matter, or it doesn't depend on the amount of matter. For example, um, the water that we used in the Rainbow Lab, it no matter how many ever drops you dropped out of the pipette, it still was red or it was still yellow. Um, same thing for like soda. No matter what sip you take, each sip is gonna have the same taste. Um, versus extensive properties, it does matter on how much of that matter you have. Um, so when we took measurements of length, width, and height of the classroom, it mattered what length the whole classroom was. It mattered um, how wide it was, how much volume it had, what shape it was. You had to take the different um, the beam measurements and the window measurements, that all mattered because it took up space, right? And so that moves us into the classification of matter. And there's a couple different types. So write this down. A pure substance is something that has definite chemical composition. Like each piece of it is exactly that same composition and it does not change. And so there's two different kinds that we're going to kind of talk about in chemistry this year. The first one being the elements. And so the elements are on the periodic table. There are currently 118. And new ones are being discovered every year. Um, each of those elements are composed of the same atoms. Um, one ox atom of oxygen is the, exactly the same as another atom of oxygen. They are not different, and so it is an element. Versus compounds, which are going to be made up of two or more elements, and they are chemically combined or bonded together. Okay, and so an example would be like table salt that has sodium and chlorine attached to it or carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has one carbon and two oxygens attached to it. And so the synthesis, this is just showing you how sodium chloride is made. And we'll watch it for a little bit here. Now the reaction between sodium metal and chlorine gas proceeds, but we know the ionization energy of sodium is greater than the energy released, electron affinity, when chlorine accepts electrons. So the reaction goes because the positive ions formed on sodium and the negative ions formed on chlorine are drawn together, a coulombic interaction, to form an ionic bond. The formation of that ionic bond, plus and minus charges attracted together, releases energy and that's the driving force for this chemical reaction. And you can see that it's exothermic. Energy's being released. Bright red glow typical of emissions from sodium. All right. And so moving on with our classification of matter, a mixture is a combination of two or more substances. Just like I said with the carbon dioxide, it has two substances, two oxygens with one carbon, and it's a combination of it within the 
error. So there's two different types of mixtures that we can have. We can have heterogeneous, which is an indefinite composition. Okay, there's differences between the two. Carbon dioxide is a heterogeneous mixture versus homogeneous. Homogeneous is has a definite composition and they are exactly alike. Okay, so we have a mixture here of oxygen or O2. They are exactly the same, but the mixture of multiple of them would be homogeneous. Goodness, I can't speak. Another like more real life example of a heterogeneous would be like a mixture of oil and water, right? They are separate from one another. No matter how many times you shake or stir them together, they will never come together and look exactly alike. You will always see oil separate from water versus like a cup of water has a definite composition of H two H's with oxygen, hydrogen with oxygen. Now, if I were to put table salt into that water and stirred it up until the salt, the white table salt dissolved, would you be able to see the salt within the water? No. And so that NaCl with water is a mixture or a solution mixture. Okay, same with the air that we breathe in. And so the air that we breathe in is not just made up of oxygen. It's made up of nitrogen, oxygen, argon, argon, and carbon dioxide, and a bunch of other gases. And so that is in itself a mixture. And so what is the difference between a solution and a mixture? And so solutions are going to be stable, similar to salt water, right? It will not separate unless it is heated up or um, cooled versus a mixture is going to separate eventually. Um, so if I were to put oil and water and shake it up, it will separate into its two densities, right? We learned that this week when we did the density towers. If I, some of you shook up your density tower in your graduated cylinder, and eventually some of them separated into a couple different layers of like the honey and the corn syrup and the pancake syrup, like those separated from the other solutions above it. And so that takes me to the states of matter. This is obviously review. Um, some of it you might not know, some of it you might have seen before. And so a solid has definite shape and volume. And so the molecules are gonna vibrate kind of slowly, They're, meaning they have low energy. They're not zinging around everywhere. They're kind of just staying in one spot, but they're not still. They're still vibrating and moving. Versus a liquid that has definite volume and it takes the shape of the container um, and will only sometimes fill parts of the container. And these molecules are kind of slipping past one another and it has a little bit more energy than a solid would. But depending on the temperature of that liquid would increase or decrease the amount of energy within those molecules. And then that leaves a gas. And so this one's going to take the shape of the container completely. It's going to spread out because gases don't like to be in locations of high concentrations. They're going to want to diffuse into different areas as much as it possibly can. These gases are going to be high energy, meaning they're zipping it around and bouncing up against other molecules within that gas. All right, so this might give you like a better visual of a solid versus a liquid in a gas. And so that moves us into phase changes. And so, a physical change occurs when we heat, when heat is gained or lost, causing a change in the state of matter. So obviously if we start at a solid and we heat it up, it's gonna cause that solid to melt into a liquid. Oops, one too many. It's gonna cause that liquid to melt into a liquid. And if we heat up that liquid enough, it's going to boil 
and start to evaporate into a gas. And so that gas, if we cooled down the gas, it would condensate into a liquid. That liquid, if we continue to cool it down even more, would freeze into that solid again. And then there are two different other phase changes that occur with skipping steps. So if you go from a solid to a gas, kind of like dry ice, that is called sublimation. Now, if I go from a gas straight to a solid, it's called deposition. All right, that's it for today's video. Make sure you write down your notes. Have a good day.